Well, greetings then, one and all. Well, greetings one and all, and welcome back to another video with your host, Andrew. Thank you for joining me once again. And today what we're gonna be doing is having a closer look at a pen from Taiwan. And that pen just so happens to be one on loan to me, and that is the Twisby Draco. So without further ado, let's roll the titles and crack on with this. Well, thank you once again for joining me on what is a very wet day here in the UK. Uh, we haven't had some rain for some time, but it's doing the garden some absolute wonders. And I have to say, actually listening to rain is, can be really relaxing actually. So anyway, enough about the weather. What you hear is to see this beautiful, beautiful pen, which is uh, on loan to me from my friend May. Uh, May has been an absolute gem of a human being. And she has loaned me um, this, this Draco, which is just absolutely striking. And so what we're going to do today, I'm going to provide you with an overview, then a writing sample, a size comparison, and then my final thoughts and feelings on this pen. So as per usual, I'm going to leave some timestamps down in the bottom, and then you can skip to whichever section you like. OK, so first off, let's have some dimensions. Wunderbar. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to start from the top and work our way down to the bottom. On the top, we have got the Twisby logo, which is indented by a laser. It's okay. I mean, I think it looks a little bit cheap, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later on. Um, we then get this beautiful, beautiful um, cracked ice or marbled uh, finish on the cap. Absolutely fantastic. Very stylish contemporary clip, very functional, fits into a shirt pocket with no problems whatsoever. Pulls up again with no problems. And then we come down and then we've got Twisby, which is again laser etched into there with a rose gold band. Comes down onto the main body, more of the same material. And then we have another little silver, sorry, rose gold ring, which separates the piston turning knob, which I won't operate as I have got ink in there. Underneath the cap, we have got more of this fantastic um, resin. And then we get a little ink window, some threads which don't impede on the comfort because you hold it relatively far down on the pen. But even for those which do hold it back up, the step up on the pen doesn't really impede the actual performance of holding this pen. And then we have got a rose gold fine Twisby nib, which is steel and on a plastic feed. Okay, so let's have a quick look, closer look at this material because this is really the star of the show. So I'm just going to turn this round and as you can see, we do get some absolutely fantastic chatoyant areas on the pen. Wonderful. And then what we're now going to do is move on to see how this pen writes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so we've got the Twisby. Draco. Wonderful. And the ink we're using today is Kobe ink. Oh, that's an E, not an I. Kobe ink. And this is Pearl Blue. We've got a fine steel nib in here. Ooh, two E's. Come on, Andrew. We got this. <laughs> Fine steel uh, nib, and it's um, made by uh, Yevo. Okay, so let's write out the quick brown fox. And again, I'm going to mix it up a little bit.
So we've got a little bit of print, a little bit of lowercase and some cursive. Okay, so this nib is very, very smooth and the paper we're using today again is Rhodia. And I have to say that this pen is just a joy to use. It does provide a little bit of feedback and it's not overly wet, but I think a lot of that's down to the ink at the end of the day, which I'm using, which is uh, a, quite a dry ink, but let's just do a couple of passes. A little bit wetter, but it dries quite quickly. And I think that if you're after having a, a drier writing experience, maybe actually, you know, experiment with uh, some more inks in here and you'll probably find that this is actually a little bit drier than some other pens, certainly at the fine grade, but it's still very pleasant to use. And I kind of prefer a drier nib, especially for uh, my artwork. Okay, so let's have a look and see what our line variations like. So, I mean, you can press down a little bit, but you're not going to get really much more out of that, in fact, because it's not my nib. Yeah, we're just getting some railroading. So, yeah, that really does sort of <laughs> maybe say a lot about the actual pen. You know, it's a little bit dry, but it's very pleasant. Okay, now can it reverse right? Yep and it's exceedingly exceedingly fine but you can and then it will start going a little bit dry but overall you know it's a pretty good pen can't complain about this whatsoever so a big smiley face for this pen okay so let's now move on to doing a size comparison with this pen Right, ladies and gentlemen, so as you can see, uh, from the left to the right, we have got a Mayora Mitho. And no, ladies and gentlemen, it's not the Delta Dolce, Del, bleh, 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 the Delta Dolce Vita, <laughs> um, but it is very reminiscent. And I've got a review of this coming up next week, actually. So look out for that. That is next week's review. Then we've got the Twisby Draco. Then we've got a lovely little Parker Jota. And then we've got a Sailor Prayer Gear Slim in the, the Vega finish. So... It's a fairly large pen, as you can see. I mean, it absolutely dwarfs the other two pens, and comparably, it's not that much smaller than the actual, what I would consider the oversized chunky boy here on the left-hand side. So, stands up pretty well in size. If you like a larger pen, this is certainly gonna work well for you. And I know from having spoken to May, she has said that, um, you know, she, she finds this uh, very comfortable. So, let's have a look at these uncapped. And I'm going to just compare the two larger ones today so you can get an idea of what these look like. Wonderful. Okay, as you can see, uncapped. Again, they're not too dissimilar. The Mayora is definitely uh, longer and certainly more girthier. But I'd say that, you know, the Twisby is a, a really, really nice pen to hold. Very comfortable section. And I like how it tapers down on that section as well. It makes it very comfortable. Uh, whereas on the Mayor, we have much more of a straight affair, but still very pleasant. Anyway, let's move on to my final thoughts and feelings and wrap up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, one thing I didn't do earlier was, and that was actually to go over the box. So I do apologize. So what do you get? You get a quite a nice cardboard sleeve with some gold foil. We pull it out. And this is something which is a little bit more different from the regular Twisbees. We get a very nice frosted plastic um, box. Undo it. And then on the inside we have got just something a little bit different from the regular Twisbees. We just get this little red cardboard as sleeve. Undo this. Up we go. And here we go. We've got the actual maintenance of the pen, which is really nice. Really clear instructions. Very practical. No second booklet cardboard, easy to recycle, and we also get a piston turning wrench and some silicon grease in there as well. So a really, really practical box. And I feel that in terms of actually giving you something a little bit more premium than that perhaps of say like a, a blister pack, which you might get with a 
Parker Jota, you do get yourself some very nice packaging, very practical as well. Now, usually some people like to get rid of their boxes. I would say maybe in this circumstance, I wouldn't because this pen, I can guarantee you will appreciate in value, certainly in the used market. Okay, now onto the pen. What do I like? What don't I like? Who's it for? Who's it not for? Okay, love, 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 love this cracked marbled finish. I love the rose gold trim. I love the fact that it's a piston um, turning knob uh, rather than a cartridge converter pen. So you are getting a lot of bang for your buck. I love the fact that we've got a very comfortable section. I love the steel nib. It's just an absolute joy to use. And having used this extensively for a lot of drawing, I would say that this is a, it's really certainly up there with um, all the other pens in this same price point, which I'll talk to you about in a bit. Now, there are a few things which I don't like about the pen, and if I can make it do it, which I probably won't. Oh gosh, no, it's not gonna do it. Oh yeah, now we're there, there we go. It does get caught from time to time on the threads, which is a little bit annoying, unfortunately. Um, you can find another starting point and then it's absolutely fine, but that's, I guess, like the most major annoying thing about the pen. Sometimes it doesn't want to cap, no matter where you start it from, and then it suddenly it does. Now, from an aesthetical perspective, I love everything about the pen, bar one thing. And I know this is nitpicking, but, as much as I love the emblem, and I don't mind the fact that it's being stamped in there, it's laser etched, and I feel it just cheapens the pen a little bit, which is a bit of a shame because everything else about the pen, with the rose gold trim, the practicality of the pen, you know, the fact that the pen does actually post, and it posts um, really nicely, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it. It does make it into a longer pen, but it does post. I just think that there's so much to love about the pen and I just feel that maybe the laser etched logo was a little bit of a, a cheap sort of move on Trisby's behalf. I appreciate that is nitpicking, but these are my thoughts and feelings at the end of the day. Okay, so who's the pen for? Certainly um, people which have got larger hands, people which are wanting to step up into the next sort of, I guess, the next category of um, fountain pens. Uh, you know, they've got themselves a Parker Jotter, they've moved up and they've got themselves a Twisby Eco or something along those lines, or a VAC 700R, and they're thinking, well, I would like to get something with a little bit more of an interesting looking um, acrylic, then this is going to be the pen for you. It's really well priced at 140 pounds. Yes, it's considerably more expensive than that of a regular Eco or a, a VAC 700R, um, but it's a really beautiful pen, and I think that is where, you know, the appeal for this pen comes, is purely in the actual aesthetics of the pen. Now, who's the pen not for? Well, people with smaller hands, to be quite frank. Um, people which just don't have the budget for it. You know, 140 pounds is not cheap for a, a pen at the end of the day. There's lots of uh, things 140 pounds can be spent on, like your weekly grocery shopping or, shoes or something a lot more practical. So this is definitely starting to go into the much more the luxury side of a writing instrument. Having said that, for £140 roughly, you can get yourself a Sailor Pro Gear Vega in the slim variant, and that will come with a 14 karat gold nib. Both pens write absolutely fantastically, um, but I would certainly recommend this maybe as the option for someone which has got smaller hands. I get on personally well with this pen, um, primarily because I love this um, medium fine nib, so I can sort of forgive its shortcomings in terms of its actual girth. Okay, so that really wraps it up for today. I want to say a massive thank you once again to May uh, for generously loaning this pen to me. It will be winging its way back to you shortly, and that really leaves it for today. So thank you once again for tuning in. And then join me for next week, where we will be having a look at the Mayora Mytho origin. So, stay tuned. Till then, stay safe and goodbye for now.